to your health this morning, Channel 2 dedicated to the well-being of you and your family. This morning we have a special guest. Yeah, Dr. Mehmet Oz. That's a trivia question. What's Dr. Oz's first name? He's joining us this morning on Daybreak. Welcome, Dr. Oz. Good morning to you. Hey, do you have time to go to that open air bar tonight with us? Uh, I, I, <laughs> He's got a packed I'll schedule. be in the air tonight, but I won't be in the open air bar. That's right. We have a list of questions for you. Of course, a lot of health topics, and we want to hear more about the show. But let's start with one of the topics we uh, had here on this show, and, and that is... pertains to us. You're doing right, and we're doing wrong right now in sitting for too long of a period and how unhealthy so that I is. I thought you just weren't being hospitable and giving me no. a chair to sit down. No, I think no. we better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it gets me though, it says even if you exercise, mm -hmm. if you sit too long, it could shorten your lifespan. Yeah, this is breaking news. The lead author is actually from Columbia, which is where I practice mm -hmm. medicine. And the reality of sitting is that it's probably this age is cancer. It causes so many catastrophic health issues, yet we're unaware of it. It slips up on us. So cigarette smoking 50 years ago was something that everyone did. It wasn't a big deal. Right. These days, everyone sits. But you'll watch my words. You know, A decade from now, people realize what I'm about to say is true. These researchers looked at 8,000 people, and they looked at how often they sat versus stood versus mm -hmm. exercised. And it turns out that the people who stood the most had half the chance of dying over the ensuing wow. four years as the people who sat the most. And here's the part that really caught everyone off guard. If you exercise, it doesn't make that I much know. of a difference. That's a it's nice. But standing, what, what is it? Is it the blood flow from standing? It's, it's lymphatic flow. So it's so it's the, the, the waste material that's left over in the body when you, when you when the blood feeds the tissues, gets stimulated. The blood flow certainly is supported. You send hormonal messages to your body that's got to stay fit and awake. Mm -hmm. That's why we know that it's not cancer and heart disease that kill Americans. It's frailty. Wow. If, if you can weather the storm of chemotherapy or the heart procedure, you're going to survive that. But if you're so frail that you fall, and, which is the number five cause of death is falling and breaking something, you can't weather it. Standing forces your body to coordinate itself. And here's the other thing. It's not the total number of hours that you're sitting. It's how often you get up while you're sitting. So you may have a desk job, everybody. Don't panic. It's okay. All right. Just every half hour, that mark my, from now on, the rest of your life, yeah. every half hour, get up, walk around. It's like being on a plane. Yeah. Right. Just get up and move things a little bit. Yep. Re avoid blood clots, but most importantly, send your body the message it needs to be alive. Set an alarm. We, of course, have to go to the bathroom every half hour. So I'm, that helps. You know, that helps yeah. me get but up. But an alarm it's hard on in your surgery, phone. by the way. It's what? It's hard to do that in surgery. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Can't go to the bathroom. Yeah. Hold your finger on the bleeder here. I'll be right back. <laughs> there you go. How about our marijuana issue in, in Colorado? Uh, recreational now, of course, medical. Uh, are we finding benefits? Huge benefits and some risks. And here's the thing. And this is one of the big themes of my show. The hypocrisy around marijuana nationally is catastrophic. And I'll give you the best example right now, opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. States that have legalized medical marijuana, and I, I'm personally not a big supporter of recreational marijuana, and I, that's a whole different ball game. That, that's to a me, whole show, yeah, isn't it? It's a yeah. whole different show, yep. and it creates some issues around emotional addiction, which, mm -hmm. but that's a separate issue. Medical marijuana, in my opinion, absolutely ought to be out there. Uh, it works for pain, it works for seizures in children, uh, and we have more and more data that it works to get people off opiates. So we've got an addiction problem with opiates that is the number one cause of death in young Americans, and yet we have a potential solution that's illegal in almost half the states. How can you tolerate that? So I've talked to the, to the DEA and the FDA mm -hmm. and, and to leaders on both sides. Everyone sort of knows what the real deal is. Mm -hmm. We just need to get out of the way and let doctors play a role in making these decisions, not just law enforcement. And I think that's gonna happen, but it's only gonna happen to people listening and hear my voice right now, get up and say, that's enough. This is not just about a, me being able to have a little good time. Right. This is about people who, are, who need medical help being able to access the best that's out there. Why do people in other countries get better access to this? Pure quality product, medically prescribed, appropriately used. That's what we should be doing here. Yeah, it's a huge educational issue though, because then you see the teenage use go up. And so it's educating and understanding, right? Yeah. It's, it's not something I would ever give to any of my children because they were nervous. I'd mm. give it to them because they couldn't sleep all night long and they were destroyed by that. Or because they had one of the other conditions right. that I mentioned. Uh, so that's why I think we need to have a, a more, more forceful approach to this, but it's not an elective issue anymore, especially when opiates are killing so many. We had a least study, and we can't right now, easily. We need at least study how we could get these people off opiates. Yeah. People see it as a gateway drug to, to harder, harsher products. That may be true for recreational use. For medical use, that's not the issue at all. Yep. Yeah, education, education. Like that. Yeah. Hey, yep. listen, come back the next hour. You're going to show us some exercises. All kinds of crazy, wacky things and amazing, amazing stuff that you never could imagine. Really? We we'll love okay. that. All right, Dr. Adams, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. 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 We're glad to have you I here. I cannot believe Dr. Haas is here. Watch out. It's a pleasure him. to meet yeah. you, Dr. Haas. Like get in here. Get in here. <laughs> I, you wouldn't mind a photo, at, would you? Look at these lapels. It's amazing. Oh, this is classy. Here we go. Okay.
There they go. You guys take a picture. This guy is my uh, hero. Great. Thanks for coming to Denver. Uh, can, can I borrow those glasses? No. <laughs> yeah. Did you show? Did he show you his rash? Okay, that's Never later, Doc. That's later, Doctor. And it's not contagious. Uh, yeah. Not no, contagious. Turning cough, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do entertainment when we come back. How about four things for you to do this weekend to keep you busy while I'm hanging out with Doctor Oz? We'll talk about it when we return. Stick around. Hank wants to. Hank. Not contagious. Peace.